Okay, welcome. This is a, a short video um, entitled Isn't Web Development Great? And we should really say and fun. Um, so <coughs> in this video here, it's going to be very simple. So what we want to do is we're going to create a um, HTML page. Uh, we're going to put a button on the page. Um, we're going to call a JavaScript function. Um, and we're going to make the JavaScript function hide or display um, HTML elements. We're going to use Ajax to talk to a PHP file. Okay, so that's essentially what we're going to do. So we're going to have um, two different files. We're going to use HTML, a bit of JavaScript, a bit of jQuery, a bit of Ajax, and we're going to talk to a PHP file. And once you can do this, you can kind of do almost everything. I mean, the only, only thing that's left is structuring it nice, making it look good, using external APIs to get some data, and then you're back to structuring it, making it look good, making it secure. But once we understand these basic things, it should be relatively straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up here and I have a, <coughs> a blank HTML page, and then I'm going to run this using Firefox um, running off the, the local host here inside my test folder and it's a test.html file and I'm going to run everything with Firebug turned on so we can see if there's any errors happening and what we'll do is when we build this we'll make sure we get some errors just so we can see what the errors are so the first thing is I'm going to put on a button and I'm going to say on click we're going to do something and then I'm going to say, click me to do something. And we're going to just simply save that. So I have here is a button. Um, the button on the on click event here, as you can see, it's going to call a JavaScript function called do something. <coughs> and essentially, the, the button's title is going to be click me to do something. So if I save that now, and if I go to Firefox, I reload my test.html page. We can see now we have a button called click me to do something um, and when I click on the button now it's telling me that I have a reference error do something is not defined which is cool because I need to go back and define it so I'm going to jump back to my editor here which is Atom and um, that I think you should use um, but it's a very very nice nice editor so what I want to do is to write a little bit of JavaScript and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to define these within script tags. And here I'm going to say the function. My function is called do something. And all I wanted to actually do is, is just to say hello. So we'll say the function do something says um, hello. So when I click on this function now, do something, it should invoke the call to the JavaScript method, do something. And inside the JavaScript method, all I'm doing is saying hello. So alert is printing out a little alert box with a string, the function do something says hello. When I save that and I rerun it, so now when I click on the click me to do something, I get out a little dialog box that says the function do something says hello. So that's cool, isn't it? Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back now and what I want to be able to do um, is just create some divs. So I'm going to say this div, its ID is cool. I'm going to say this is the cool div. I'm going to close off that div. Now I'm going to say div ID equals bad. So this is the bad div, yeah? And this is the, the bad div. Now, <coughs> what we really want to demonstrate here is, regardless of whatever elements that you have on your HTML page, if you give it an ID, you can get access to that element and you can manipulate that element. Whether you're changing the inner HTML, you're changing the style, 
if you're referencing new classes associated with that element, you can do anything at all by grabbing that element in JavaScript and manipulating the contents. So here what we'll simply do is when I reload this page now, we can see that we have this is the cool div and this is the bad div. Now we've no styling. And I'm not really going to worry about um, styling it as I'm sure CSS is like a second language to most people by now. But what I will do is I'm going to set the display on the second div to be equal to none. When we reload the page now, we see that the second div disappears. Um, but wouldn't it be nice that <coughs> we can change the, um, the state of this element if we click on that method? So what we're going to do is, under the do something method, well, what we simply want to be able to do, yeah, so let's, let's write in a little message here. Yeah, so we want to be able to bring the bad div, um, we say, back to life. Okay, so we're going to be able to see it, yeah. So in here, when we go through and we click the do something, well, we simply need to grab that element. So we say element. Um, by ID and the ID of this div as we can see down here it's called bad we simply say document get element by ID bad that style that display is going to be equal to inline so in other words what I want to be able to do here is I want to be able to say look okay well we have a method here called do something we've got a couple of divs on the page one div is actually <coughs> being displayed one div isn't being displayed and when I click on that function, I want to just show the other div. Um, so when we show the other div, um, it should appear on the on the page. So if we go click me, um, and click me now is going to make sure that that other div actually shows up. So you can see the other div now showing up. And you can see the div there is after showing up. Um, we also have some nice background music there with a, a phone ringing, but um, it's, it's gone off at the minute. So we have this now new div showing up, but let's make the other div disappear. Okay, so again, we can control this by manipulating the element. So we can say document.get element by, and the other div is called cool. And we say that, is, that style, that display is equal to none. So this time, what we're going to be able to do is when we click on this element, what should happen is the function is going to say hello, because we make it say hello. And now what happens is it's saying that this is the bad div has now come to life, right? So it's showing this is the bad div and the other div has disappeared. Okay, but they're not, that's not kind of, that's okay. Yes, we can manipulate this stuff, right? So we don't mind that. Now, so what I'd also like to be able to do is talk to my server because if I don't talk to my server, I can't actually get any data into my database. I can't get any data from my database. I can't actually do any interaction. This is all client side stuff. So what we want to be able to do is jump over to um, the other side. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a very simple Ajax call. Okay. Um, and the URL is going to be hitting a file called test.php. And then what I want to be able to do, I'm going to reference the type of call it's going to be. It's going to be a get request. <coughs> we have many other types that we can use. So from a data perspective, um, I don't need any data to be passed over to the server. Um, I'm going to make sure that this isn't uh, an asynchronous call, so I'm going to make that to be false. And then I'm going to, on the success function, I'm going to grab whatever data that's coming back from the call, and I'm simply going to say the data coming back from the server is, I'm going to say, plus data. Okay, and we can see that, and I'm not going to cache any any results, yeah? Um, okay, so this looks fairly straightforward. We can see that we're making an Ajax call. The URL is going to is test.php. We're using the get method. We're passing over no data and we're making sure that it's not an, an asynchronous call. And on the success function, we're simply going to print out the data that's coming back from the PHP file test.php. Um, I'm going to get rid of these, but what I'll do is um, inside here, I'm going to say 
if data equals equals bad, um, I'm going to show the bad div. Okay, now we're going to save this now and I'm going to run it. Okay, so now I'm expecting to see some errors. So um, nothing's going to happen until I click on the do something function because I haven't actually invoked this code yet. Okay, so when we reload the page and we click on this, um, the function says hello, so that's cool. Um, and the reason that says hello is when we enter in for, from a thread of execution point here, we start here and we work our way down through the function. And the first thing we see here is alerts the function do something says hello. And next what's going to happen is it's going to try and make that Ajax call. <coughs> and what it's telling me here is that the dollar symbol is not defined, which means that um, we don't actually have jQuery on the page, right? So to make a jQuery Ajax call, we need to actually reference jQuery on the page somewhere. Um, and that somewhere just has to be back to one of the, the, the jQuery um, libraries. So if we go now, so let's say if I'm on Firefox, and I'm going to type in here and I'm going to say, um, I, I want to reference, or we say, sorry, how do I reference jQuery? Okay, so I have to type in how do I reference jQuery and I can see from the W3 schools it's going to tell me. Now I can see how do I reference jQuery from HTML JavaScript app application. This is on Stack Overflow. Um, here's another one linking jQuery and HTML Stack Overflow again. Um, JavaScript, is there a link to the latest jQuery library on the Google APIs? Again, we're looking at Stack Overflow again. Um, I see I've already clicked on this before, so let me click on this again. When I go in here, um, <coughs> I don't I don't really mind what's actually being being said here. All I actually want is a link, yeah. Um, so I can see that here it looks like this looks like it's a link to ajax.googleapis.com forward slash ajax libraries jQuery 1.8.3 jQuery minified. So if I just simply copy that, yeah. So I don't really care what version it is, all I'm running is a standard call now out to uh, an Ajax call, yeah? So if I do that now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this link down here at the bottom of the page. And now we're going to go back to our Firefox page. I'm going to jump back onto the test.html. I'm going to reload the page, okay? Reload the page. We know that everything should be cool until we click on the button. When I click on the button, it now says network error 404 not found test.php but that should be as expected because we don't actually have the test.php page we can see here we have a test folder and inside the test folder we have test.html so I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to say test.php and inside my test.php file I'm just going to say um, echo bad okay so echo bad um, and all I want to be able to do is I want my Ajax request here to go over to PHP to talk to test.php using a get request and when it invokes when it runs a test.php file the test.php file simply says bad so it echoes out the word bad and that should be um, sent back across as a string so <laughs> on the success function, we hopefully will see that the alert is the data coming back from the server is, and we'll, say, we'll see it as bad. Now we have a little condition inside this function as well, and we say if data equals bad, document.getElementById bad.style.display is in line. So in other words, we're going to show the div that has been hidden as long as the information coming back from the server page is the string bad. Okay, and let me just uh, make sure that's saved and we have a look. Now we can see inside of our, our test folder here, we've got a test.html and a test.php file. So then we go back here again, I'm going to reload it. And I can see I have my click me to do something button. I have the this is the cool div. And when I click on this now, I don't get an error now. So now it's recognizing jQuery and it's it's going to find, sorry, we haven't got past the hello yet, but it will recognize jQuery and the Ajax call. And it's going to find a test.php file, which should actually send us back uh, um, the string.
bad. And when we click on that, we can see down here in the console that we've just invoked a get request on the test.php. And if I open up that, I can see that the param's gone across um, where what looks to be a, a timestamp. We can look at the headers and we can view the response. So the response that should be coming back is the string bad. And we can see that the response is bad. Um, and it also shows us um, the result in H I am HTML. So now I can look in my own files. So we go back into the Ajax success, success function here. We can see that the data that comes back into this function here is simply being printed out. So the data coming back to the server is, and we have data. So we have the data coming back from the server is, and we have the word bad. And now you can see that this is the bad div is now after displaying. So what happened was um, the code ran this check here and it said, if the data is equal to the string bad, get the element by the ID bad and change the style um, display to make it in line. So which is why it appears on this, on this page now. So <coughs> just to recap, well, we started off with a very simple button. We passed that button to do something. We on a click event. So after looking at the click event, we created the function do something. We made the function say hello. We hid some elements on the page. We then, after clicking on the function, we were able to change the state of those elements. Then we created an Ajax um, query um, using jQuery and we created a new test.php page and over on the test.php page all we did was send back the string um, bad. On grabbing that response we were able to then manipulate the HTML page. So I suppose the most important thing is that you understand that you have a client page where you do all of the client stuff and then you talk to the server. So you use Ajax to talk to the server instead of reloading a whole page and wasting time. Now when you're over on the on the server side here, yeah. So we we won't do it now, but this this is oh this is where we would connect yeah to our database yeah um, update information and get information run run different stats and. Uh, uh, run different stats, whatever, like connect uh, two APIs, right, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, and then usually we just send our responses back to the client. Okay, so fairly straightforward. So no matter what what you're doing, yeah. Once you understand the differences when you have your HTML, you've got your JavaScript or your jQuery, and then you use this to talk to the server, and the server does whatever it has to do, and it just simply communicates back, you should be able to manipulate and change or do whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, I hope that makes sense.